Hi there, grade 11s, Mr. H here. And can you believe it? We are preparing for the finals of 2025. I mean, this year has just flown by. So, this is the first of two videos. These are the last videos that you're probably going to end up using as you prepare for your finals. This one is focused on what you should be focused on for your upcoming practical paper. Now remember, as I've said in a previous video, I can't give you exacts because each school is going to examine different skills, but I'm going to go through what you should be knowing at this stage and what's typically in the paper and in the papers <laughs> that I've seen over the past few years. Now, first things first, your prac paper should be out of around about 150 marks, could be 160, but generally 150 marks for your prac. And that should be anywhere between two and a half to three hours in length. What is going to happen now is that your final paper will be split up and be structured more or less the way a grade 12 June prelim and end of year paper is structured. So you'll find that you'll start with a file and folder management or computer management section. You'll then have a section on Word, which can be one or two questions. You'll go to Excel. Excel is usually one. Um, and then access as well and obviously not forgetting HTML right at the end. So you'll usually find that file and folder management and HTML carry about 20 to 25 marks each depending on you know how it's been set up and then the bulk of the marks come from Word, Excel and access. Now these sections carry different marks. For example your file and folder management typically carries 15 to 20 marks HTML the same. Word, Excel and Access, that's where you get the bulk of your marks in the middle. They typically carry anywhere from 30 to 45 marks per section. So with that in mind, let's go through these. Now the first section we're dealing with is file and folder management. Folks, this is where you just need to know and remember how to work in the PC. Creating files, folders, shortcuts, taking screenshots, compressing a file or folder, decompressing it or unzipping them. Checking the attributes of a file, looking at things like the author, the date it was created, the size of the file. Copying and pasting files into a new folder that you've created. Also, the window itself that I'll probably have up on the screen, the view here, changing those tabs on top, adding one, removing one, and sorting the contents of everything that's inside the folder. And so here's my very first tip. Shh. Renaming a folder and file, sorting, screenshots, Extracting the contents of a folder and creating a shortcut are typical things that come in. Who's whispering like that? Anyway, let's move on to our Word section. Now I always say with Word you need to know the basics. You might ask what are the basics? Changing the font, the font style, the font size. Adjusting margins, page size, changing one page to landscape and keeping the rest as portrait. Adding a table of contents and updating it, a multi-level list. Modifying and applying the modified style. So modifying that style and applying it. Page numbers, headers and footers, a date in the header or something in the footer section. Paragraph spacing, paragraph formatting, page formatting. And the age old adding text and getting a picture, inserting that picture and having the picture next to the text. Other things that usually come up is converting text to a table. And then once you've got that table, modifying things in the table like not just the borders and the text, but adding a calculation to that table. Also with page numbers, don't forget to be able to put in section breaks so that you have different page numbers on different pages. Maybe they want the different odd even pages or they want the page numbers to start at a particular page. Then lastly with Word, don't forget a mail merge. Now, depending on what you've done at your particular school, you could be asked to edit the recipients, right? To actually sort that list before adding the merge fields. And again, if you're not sure on that particular one, go and check out the video over here. Don't forget to be able to crop the image. Don't forget to be able to adjust the size of the image that you are inserting. Modifying styles and applying the modified style is a typical, typical question that comes in. And changing the page orientation, another typical question. And I'm serious when I say this, don't forget those page numbers. Don't forget that page X of Y. Lastly, with mail merge, don't forget that there's two documents that get created when you finish the merge. So don't forget to save the second one as well. 
Why does it feel like someone else is coming in to give you tips? Anyway, let's move on to Excel. Now again with Excel, we're doing the basics. Being able to enter data into a cell. Renaming the tabs at the bottom, um, changing the color of those tabs, typing in formulas, applying borders, adjusting the row height and the column width, maybe deleting a row and a column, adjusting that, merging cells and centering the text in them, naming a cell or a range of cells for that matter. Conditional formatting. Practice that conditional formatting. Also adding charts. Doesn't matter what type of chart, they'll tell you which one, they have to tell you that, but being able to insert a chart and usually being able to cut that and paste that to another sheet in your workbook. Then your formulas, your basic formulas plus things like count if, sum if, the other different counts, average, rand, rand between. Also, formulas that can be used together like round average, correcting Excel errors. And if you have done this, Sorry, no pun intended. But if you've done this, the VLOOKUP. Also your IF statement. Some of you would have already jumped into nested IFs. If not, generally you should just be asked to do an IF statement. Sorting and filtering data in Excel. And of course, your freeze panes. Psst, typical questions that, that come up. Freeze panes keeps coming up. Count, count IF, sum IF. And of course the IF statement as well. Now as for that double function, guys, Typical round average. That is typical. I've seen that in so many papers. And of course, don't forget absolute cell referencing, especially when you're using autofill. Be careful of that. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention in Word, inside the tables, you know those formulas? They love to use things like above sum and above average. Again, typical questions that come up. Now we move on to the infamous section, which is access or our database. Now, I would typically go and practice creating a new database, creating a table, uh, a form, a query, entering records. The bulk of your marks in a table comes from the field properties. So know how to set required, the default value, validation rule and text, changing the data type, setting primary keys, and even adding totals in the data sheet view. Then with regards to queries, now there's a lot that can come out of a query. So it's not just being able to create the query, but being able to sort the query, being able to decide to show a field or not to show a field, being able to put in criteria. And remember, you've got criteria and or, so go and play around with that. You can also get multiple criteria for one query. And my big tip for queries is do everything, like with HTML, one step at a time. So if they ask you to do multiple items, like sorting it, applying a query, don't show a particular field, then sort it first, run the query. Don't display the field, run the query. Go and put the first part of the criteria in, run the query. Right? In that way, you're making sure that you can actually tick off what you are doing in that paper. Then our forms. Now, most of what we do in the forms is confined to the header section. So being able to change the background color, insert an image, change the text, maybe add a text box. In the details section, they don't ask you for too much. Background color, change things around, maybe add another text box with a label. And please know the difference between a label and a text box. And then in the footer section, they'll sometimes ask you to add a calculation and a button. And then lastly for access, we have a report. Now our reports are quite simple, okay? It's made very complicated. It's made to seem that way, but it's not. So most of what we do is in the creation of the report. Because when we create a report, and guys, by the way, when we create, we use our wizards, right? I'm sure this other one who's giving tips here is, is going to tell you that. But once you create that report, as you go through that process, in that wizard, you group, you sort, um, you change the layout, you make sure it's either um, portrait or landscape that it's gonna display. All of those things are done inside of the wizard for you. The most I've seen is that they want you to change every alternate row color and they want you to, and this is again something that comes up often, is adding some sort of calculation or multiple calculations in the uh, report footer. So typical questions inside of your table. Primary key, that data type. Know how to create a combo box. So you're gonna to go to data type and you're gonna to go to lookup wizard. That is something that's again typical. 
typical required default value, moving those fields up and down or deleting one, and then applying a new primary key to something that's more appropriate. In your form, know how to add a button, make changes to the heading, and just be able to create a new form. As far as your queries, I think he said everything. But typical things are sorting, criteria, and just creating a query. Don't forget, with criteria, you can have criteria that says more than something. So we're gonna put that greater than sign in, less than something. And we've got the criteria and or. When you put something in criteria and or, and you've got another criteria, you've got to put it in both. Otherwise it won't apply. And then in the reports, it's true what he says. Every single time, you're going to be asked to add calculations to the report footer. Guys, go and practice that. And then the last section in your paper is going to be HTML. So let's see what you need to do there. Now we obviously need to know the basics and I would urge you to go and practice creating a few websites of your own. Get the structure correct. Put in things like bold, italic, underline, paragraph um, tags. Put in your BR tag to take it to a new line. Add a hyperlink. Insert an image and adjust that image's width and height. Center that image. Add a hyperlink. Add a hyperlink to another page that you've created. Add text in the title section so that it appears in the browser tab. Background color, font color and style. Remember, it's not font style, it's gonna be font face. And insert in an image, either into a particular area or as a total background for your web page. It's the last time I'm here. The lists that he's talking about, okay, those lists, be able to change the type. So with a bullet list, be able to change it from a normal bullet, which is round, to a square bullet, which is type equals square. And remember for your list, you have two types, an ordered list, OL, and an unordered list, UL. You can create types for both. With your OL, you're gonna go type equals, and you can make it one, two, three, A, B, C, Roman numerals, whatever you want. But for your unordered list, you'll have to type in whether it's square, diamond, I don't know, whatever you want. Hyperlinks are typical, either converting text to a hyperlink or an image to hyperlink, and then inserting an image and resizing that. Here's a bonus one. They can sometimes even give you a list without the tags and ask you to change the text to a bullet list. These are my tips over and out. And that's it, grade 11s. That is all you need to prepare. Everything else is in the description. There are links to various things in here. Go and check all of that out. And good luck for your upcoming CAT grade 11 November final paper. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and let me know when you're done with the paper, how did it go? Then I'll see you in the last video where we prep for theory.